Scotty Yang. <laughs> I'll know more about that in a minute. But um, Scotty, oh, yeah. I, I I don't get to hear the story. Oh, oh no, no, no. It's uh, it's I I don't know. I I started. I created the. It's Yang is my middle name, right? And oh. uh, Scotty, I was my my nickname when I was a kid, and. Right. I don't know. It's kind of messy now because it's like some people call me Scott. Some people call me Scotty. Know me as Scotty. It's I, I, I created a monster. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I don't so, know what the hell there I was you doing. Go. It, so that, that you are a Scott Warren, but you're, one, one of your brands is Scotty Yang. That's your video production brand. And then you yeah. have a brand that we've talked about in the past. We're going to revisit today called Heights Apparel. That's right. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because I literally all my like, film, TV, uh, video industry colleagues, they all know me as Scotty. Uh, and sometimes I get them mixed up. <laughs> it's, it's really a mess. And I solely did it simply because my real name is Scott Warren. And there's, I, it's pretty plain. And I was trying to think of a way to kind of, um, something that was eye catching and, and that could like pull people from like my, my name from the pile of things that I was applying to. And so I create, I was like, oh, well, why don't I use my middle name? And it has a nice ring to it, right? So Scotty Yang. And then yeah. I created a Gmail email to use called, uh, that goes by Scotty Yang is awesome. Just trying I to, love that. Yeah, I just trying to think of something like random and stupid that would just catch a person's eye. And it's a 50-50 shot. There's 50-50, you know, half the people love the email and like they'll comment, they'll tell me like in their first reply back to me, like, I love your email. And other fifty like don't you know? So it's it's pretty you know hit or miss. You know it's that's really funny. You know I'm gonna do what while we're talking here. And, and we were we were joking about this before. You're gonna be helping me with my lighting this year because my new studio's lighting just kind of is. I thought it was gonna be great because I have these two huge windows, but not so much. So <laughs> I've got this like you know archaic lights shining on me, so I can't see crap. So yeah, I need it's the sun, it's the sun in your eyes. I I swear to God, right? And I get meta, I have menopause brain, which I I joke about. <laughs> And I can't spell for shit. So A P P A R E L, right? Apparently. I mean, I, neither can I. Like you're asking the wrong person, but I yes, know, right? I think so. That, but that's the, so I want. Oh, it won't let me do both. Okay, well, we'll. we'll that's we'll right. Do Scotty. That's fine. Heights is good. Heights is good. So we were talking um, pre-show about this um, about the learning as you grow concept, right? And I think that you're. Uh, in the process of growing two brands simultaneously, so and, and like I'm growing three, right? Yeah. And and um and so I've got Relentless Talk Radio, I've got Michelizzi Enterprises, and I've got um Shoes Healthy Change, and I've got Mich Michelle Michelizzi Art and Fashion. So I have four brands I'm growing simultaneously. <laughs> so we're probably flippingpreneurs, is what we are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and and and, uh, and so I I love that about you, but you also and, and also share something in common with Jordan Kavanaugh, who's the guest. Um, Pre you, who's in the health and fitness section, um, you both have brand new babies, which to me is like you guys are my heroes because I was raised by my dad and my godfather, who had obviously had us as babies and were building their brands then. So I have like a super duper soft spot for really brave men that are able to step out from underneath corporate America or the safe, cushy job, which, you know, obviously there's none of that. We know that now with COVID yeah. um, and, and start building a brand. So, so I love that you're building two brands. Um, they, they're both creative, so they are related, but I think some people might say, oh, Scott, you need to focus on one thing and, and, you know, come on. And the reality is, is that's not flipping reality, is it? I mean, the reality no. is that you can't just step away from your clients and just drop your, your hat into your, um, into your apparel line because it's going to take, so your, your apparel line is going to be a slow burn and it's oh, going to yeah. Oh, yeah. time and energy and effort to get that thing going. So you got to pay the bills in the meantime. Totally. And if you're an entrepreneur, um, you're going to do that in a variety of ways. You're going to keep some um, 1099 clients where you're working directly for them on their mission. And you're basically like a video guy for hire, which is what yeah. you do. You know, you do that under the, the, the Scott Warren persona. And yeah. Scott Yang is your video production company where you'll make it you have a, your own company where you work with companies to produce video for them we are yeah. doing a um a special episode on the second and fourth wednesdays at 7 a.m on relentless talk radio we'll be sharing with um people uh, the business owners in particular but people generally really how you they can use video in this down weird covid and holy crapness time um, to build their brand and just stay in touch with people. So that's going to be the second and fourth Wednesday. We haven't named it yet. So anybody yeah. has a good idea for, for the second 
right? Let, you know, go ahead and, and message them under under the comments here. We're actually recording this segment today because you have an appointment at the time that Relentless Talk Radio usually is. I had a cancellation. I know four, five weeks in a row I've had a cancellation for this segment, and then and I've had to scramble to find the right person, and it's always been perfect. So, so thanks I for that. Yeah, no problem. Like you're living that producer life. That's basically the life of a produ of a producer <laughs> of That's a show producer. Too. Pivot all day long, right? Yeah, so yeah. I want you to tell people about your two separate brands and what they are. Okay, I kind of gave you a segue, but you've got um, Scotty Yang, which is your video production, and then you've yeah. got Heights Apparel, which is your fashion line, which is geared towards super tall dudes because that's what you are. Yep. You're tall and you're slender, right? You're yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a, a tall, skinny ass guy that's basically what it boils down to and uh yeah so the guy heights apparel i i make uh casual lifestyle clothing for tall guys six three to seven foot plus mm -hmm. um and i officially launched the first product last may but i have been i mean it's probably been what two years or more of just development just you know fleshing out the idea not knowing where to go, uh, trying to research that sort of thing. Just a lot of that. There's a, there's a ton of legwork that has gone up until launching those first t-shirts uh, last May. And then like, even now I'm revising the pattern on the t-shirts right now. So I'm coming out with a version 2.0, hopefully some point in the near future, <laughs> once all this craziness ends. Right. Um, but I think what's, what's more important about the brand. And I think this is part of the long-term vision that I have for it is um, transforming the way tall guys feel about their appearance. And you know, confidence comes on two levels, it's physical and it's mental. Um, and what I'm trying to solve right now is that physical side, that appearance, right? Because one thing that I learned uh, when I was in my career, starting my career, making some disposable income, was I started you know, buying shirts off the rack, because I needed the sleeves the long, the right length, casual shirts with the long sleeves, and I would buy them like double XLs. Obviously, way too wide for my my slim right. frame. You look here, like in your pajamas. Go, yeah, yeah, and I would go and take it to a tailor, and um, you know, pay an extra 40, 50, 60 bucks to have them tailored to my size. Um, and but the 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 thing with that was I'd get that shirt back and I'd put that shirt on. And it, the way it makes you feel, and I, I, there's a, probably a lot of people out there that is like, oh, wow, whatever, like, who cares, you know, that sort of thing. But for some of us out there, when you've never had, never known what it felt like to have something fit you in the right way, uh, is it is transform, transforming. It's cha it's game changer for us because now you're like, you're walking a little bit taller, you you know, you just feel more, you less awkward. Uh, not self-conscious about like, is my stomach showing on my shirt? Like, it doesn't matter what type. It could be a formal wear, a t-shirt, a casual button up. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're you're thinking about it. It's in the back of your head uh, about whether the sleeves, do I look stupid because my sleeves are too short? Or is like, does it look stupid because my the shirt's not long enough over, you know, that sort of thing. Pants not long enough, that sort of stuff. So um, that's what I'm focusing on right now. Now, like I've had, I've, I've made a small little pivot in that long-term vision simply because of the current state we're in right now. Right. Um, and I'm currently working on producing more content for Heights focused around empowering yourself, uh, mental health, wellness, giving some tips and suggestions. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, resources out there now that were, that are paid, but are for free currently. And I just want to spread that information out to my tribe and just give them that opportunity to take up, you know, take in some of the resources, uh, make sure that they're keeping their mind right, um, you know, and 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 using this as a silver lining to to maximize the extra time you have uh, at home um, and better yourself, whether it's professionally or personally. Um, and that's kind of like part of the long term game plan I've laid out for Heights overall. You know, we'll make clothing. Yeah, but yeah, I want it to be about the content how a situation will cause you to look at stuff in a different way. You know, so for, for me, when I was starting my, my consulting business and I started to do these interviews yeah. and so my image, you know, I got over my fear of the camera, which yeah. completely gotten over vanity completely. And, <laughs> you know, cause if you're doing a video every two or three or four or five or seven a week, like you can't look like your best every flipping day. So I got over that. 
But yeah. what it did uncover was as I was doing my marketing images, like I do about four or five shoots a year where I'll get dressed up and put fake eyelashes on and like do the, 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 the my, me at my best shoot, right? Yeah. My phone started to blow up with, holy crap, you're 50 something and I don't look like you. What are you eating? How are you working out? And that literally made me like back up and say, this 36 years I've been a personal trainer, I guess I can't move away from that because people need it. And as yeah. I started to build my art brand and bring fashion into it, I'm just reminded of being in New York City as a personal trainer and knowing that you can't look feel good in your clothes if you don't feel good in your body. Yeah. And so I, I brought the health and fitness piece back, and that's how health and fitness became a segment on Relentless Talk Radio. It kind of the, my following kind of forced me to continue to keep on adding that in my in my into my mix. So whenever there's a change and you get d information or data from putting stuff out there, you go, oh, here's an opportunity. So I, I love the fact that you're taking what you you took from a personal standpoint, which usually we keep private. We don't tell people. Right. You know, I'm how tall are you? You're like six, six, seven, six, seven, like, yeah. years, right. And people would normally think like, here's a six foot seven guy. He's got to be full of confidence because he's so tall because everybody assumes that tall equals confidence, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. 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 Big personality equals confidence. You know, people think yeah. that I'm confident every second. I'm like, I, I don't know who you, I, no, I'm not. Of course not. I mean, I'm in my pajama bottoms wondering what the hell a lot. Like I'm in my pajama bottoms right now, quite frankly. <laughs> but you know, the, the reality is, is that. You know, people don't share that stuff because they think they have to only show this confident, you know, I've got it figured out thing. And and what I love you adding in the fact that when you wear clothing that is fitted to you, it does increase your confidence. I mean, it's a no brainer. If you put a potato sack on, I don't care how <laughs> old you right. are underneath, you don't feel good. So if you go put something on that makes you feel good, I don't, you know, fill in the blank. No, ab well, absolutely. And it's about comfort too. It's, I cannot. I have a oh, ton of shirts. You're sprinkling shirt. your underwear. It's really hard to feel hot. I'm not, <laughs> right. I, mean, well, it's, it, I have a ton of shirts. I have brands that I, you know, even though I have my own clothing brand, I s still buy other brands that I follow and that I like because I love their their designs. I love, you know, and there's brands like I buy it and I wear it, but it's like that. Um, uh, if if for all the ladies out there that have a pair of shoes or heels or something that you really love and you wear them, but man, by the end of your night, you're, you're kicking those, like you're glad. Yeah. And that's what it's like wearing shirts sometimes is because I, it's, it's not cut and sewn together uh, for uh, my body type. And, but I still wear it because, because I like it that much, Yeah. Um, but it's not comfortable. And yeah, it's a difference. It's a, there's, there is a difference when you buy tall sizes and that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking to do is, is transform. And you'd be surprised. There are a lot of tall guys out there that have no idea what a proper piece of fitting clothing <laughs> looks. Or because like. they've, been, they've, been, they've been like basically putting a potato sack on like a, yeah. like a shirt with a, a, a button down that doesn't show there anything. And they just look like a big block with like jeans on all the time. There's, there's no, there's no differentiation. So yeah. I love that you're doing that. And I love that your video, what you're saying is you're you're taking your first love, which you went to film school, and you are a a a a, a talented video producer that you that you earn money with clients and you earn money with your own clients doing that. And you're taking that skill and you're repurposing into your own company, which is awesome. I love being, for me, a jack of all trades. I do all my own design work. I do all my own bookkeeping. I do all that that stuff I can do myself. Now, bookkeeping is not my fave, and I really am looking forward to offloading that. I hate bookkeeping. I can I do it. Right? Well, it's it's just, we're you know, creative people. Like We don't want to deal with numbers. You know, I, I, just, <laughs> I have this weird left-right brain. I yeah. have spreadsheets for everything. Everything I do is based upon numbers. Uh, every yeah. brand has a number associated with it. You know, I'm, I'm a definitely a number driven person, but I, I'd rather somebody else do the actual data entry, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, that's but, why I'm, that's why I married a math and science nerd. See, there you but, go. You're really smart. <laughs> she's the balance. Super smart. So, but I love the fact that you're taking your video and you're looking at your brand and you're saying, yeah. "Hey, I see some things that would add value to the people who are my ideal client." Yeah. Per year. And I'm going to repurpose this video business that I have. And then I'm also going to be growing the video business at the same time to fund that effort. It's yeah. exactly what polyprinters do. 
we have several hats that we put on and yeah. we have one lead hat that that might drive the passion project like i never want money to be the thing that drives my art i never did i never right. will I, it, making money on my art is like the, the the least important thing about it the most important thing about my art is using it as a catalyst to, cre to create conversations and build brand for others and to create a social experiment where other talented driven people get to meet on a biannually basis and talk to each other. And right. that my art is a thing that is spawning those meetings. And the conversations that happen when they're there, it's irrelevant to me what the conversations are. It's just that people are getting together. Now, during COVID, we're not getting together, but I'm, I, I definitely am doing what you're doing, which is taking the time to get back in my studio and to, and to get ready for the push moving forward. So I love that you're taking all of your skills and you're dumping it into a basket and you're just pulling out the skill that, that works best for the brand and the time and you're, and you're putting money in your bank account from a couple different areas and yeah. you're repurposing. So I love that, which is kind of, you know, the, we, I always ask people, what's the biggest lesson they've learned in business? And you know, what do you, do you think that's what your biggest lesson is, is repurposing your skill set depending upon the brand or is there something bigger that you've learned? Well, I, no, repurposing is a big is a big lesson because when you stop repurposing, you're gonna be left out in the cold. Right. Because especially in the work that I do, it's very technology driven. It's um, tr there's trends and techniques and visual looks the way things look and upon that. And if you're not continually updating your skills and techniques along with how fast the updates to the applications that you're using are happening, you're going to be left out in the cold. And that is no joke because point in case, I started my, my career in LA because I wanted to work on TV and film to me that that was my goal was like, I, I was here and I was like working freelance, like AV work. And I just wasn't happy. I was like, this isn't what I, what I got into this stuff for. And I moved to LA, crashed on a buddy's couch, found a job and in post-production and basically entry level, worked my way up and learned every little facet I could along the way. Um, however, the, the, the industry and the market in LA is a, so much more different than Phoenix. So when we finally, my wife and I, we moved back to Phoenix, you know, I struggled quite a bit. And I, sometimes I still feel like I'm struggling because um, the work is different. The budgets are different. Um, the, the type of content you're making is different. Whereas more and more entertainment focused, right over there, more, much more entertainment focused, yeah. a lot more entertainment work over here, here, it's a lot more corporate and just general marketing. And so trying to find that, that medium, and I was specialized in my work, my line of work, my skill was very specialized. That's what LA is. LA is if you're working in TV and a commercial space, you know, you have your editors over here, you have your, your, your directors here, you have your director, your, you know, your DPs, your cinematographers, you know, everyone's is focused on being the best at that particular component of the work. Um, where I really have had to adopt that mindset of like, I gotta, I gotta, you know, open up my skill set more was when I you know came here even when I went to to the east coast for a bit um and I needed to make money while I was in grad school I really had to I bought a camera you know I wasn't the best at shooting but I knew that if I wanted to keep my editing progress going as an editor and storyteller on that side um I needed to start shooting my own stuff and so you just buy a camera and I just go out and start shooting next thing you know like I'm picking up some clients and I you know I help pay my way through school uh, graduate school um, by taking on small business clients while out there making some money and producing from A to Z, uh, you know, videos for them. And that's kind of where I started taking, oh, like, I kind of like this all encompassing, you know, I'm producing it, I'm creating the concept, I'm listening to the client, figuring out the strategic need for their video content, and then going out and creating it from start to finish. And I, I think that, you know, being a scrapper like that is, uh, I think that being a scrapper is a skill and some people get caught. I remember when I was first came out here to Arizona, I had just finished graduate school. I had this business degree. I was ready to get the big job and the recession hit and didn't happen. So I started a business that we do. And I made the decision to, after five years to come out here in Arizona. And of course, all of those executives that were getting laid off were in 
you know, uh, job search kind of networking situations with me. And I was, oh, and I was really amazed to see how many people had been like the X, Y, Z little, mm -hmm. you know, in a box in a corporation for 20 years that were out here in this world. And we're like, I, just, I don't even know. I don't know how my phone works. I don't know. Uh, what do you mean? I, I can email from my phone or what's this Facebook thing? I, yeah. I, LinkedIn. I haven't had one of those. You know, they really were kind of like babes in the, I found it really interesting. They had the jobs that I was looking to get, but they got so comfortable in those jobs. They stopped growing. Yeah. And then the world has moved so quickly that, I mean, we were talking pre episode that I'm behind in my YouTubes. And right now the reason why is because my, um, my video software updated and I have an interview with Jason, um, Jake Weeks that happened several months several months ago now that I have to cut off a piece of the video because yeah. New Lives platform changed and I was recording too long. I didn't want Jake to have that in his video to reshare. So I like to sh I like to put things in order. And so every time I would get in there to try to relearn like what how what happened with um what's the software I use Premiere. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would be like, shoot, I ran out of time, right? So you're going to help me to, to cut that learning curve down because you've been in it and using it and you're going to help me to do that. But it's just, I, I, I could have loaded the other videos, but I'm like, crap, I don't want to like get out of, get out of sequence. So yeah. the, if you're not on top of things, you're really at a, at a, um, at a disadvantage because here I am, I'm on, I'm on top like you are most of the time, but I, I, they can do a change in the software that literally changes the entire landscape. And you're like, wait a minute, where was it? So you actually turn off the automatic updates in your software so that you don't have. And so I, I'm, I've started to do that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it make any sense to keep it on there. Well, it's a, it's a, you know, when it's a tough lesson to learn and most of us learn it the hard way when you have, an auto update happen in your middle of a client project and you have a deadline coming up and you don't realize it updates and you go to open up the project today because there's client notes and you're running on the 11th hour and it crashes and it won't open up and you're just panicking and freaking out and on all on the forums trying to figure out what's the answer what can i do that sort of thing um i learned that one of my early mentors uh, when I was coming up as an assistant editor in television, um, he basically taught me everything I need to know what I and what I use today um, about technical troubleshooting and post production. Um, and that's you know rule number one: turn off auto updates. You know what? And and I I will I will definitely do that in my Adobe Creative Suite because yeah. I have it I have it turned off on my. Um, on my apps on my phone, but Adobe right. Creative Suite is a separate space. And I hadn't yeah. thought like, oh shoot, I should have done that. So yeah. I, I'm gonna go do that today, as a matter of fact, because I still forgot to get back there and do it. So thank you for reminding me of that. No problem. So today's topic, and we're going a little over, but it's fine. We're recording today so we can do that. I'm gonna, I, are you okay with your time? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so the today's relentless topic is building an empire one baby step at a time. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and share this this picture if I can see where my mouse thing is. Um, here's your family. I, I'm super excited about that picture. It's such an awesome, awesome picture. We're going to be um, sharing some stuff in our in our video series about places that you can shoot video um, that you can rent because you actually rented a place. So come back on Wednesday and we'll share some of the places you can rent to to do a photo shoot such as this on your own. Um, yeah. And, and is it for your business but you and and um and jordan have the in common that you have um children and brand new babies when this covid thing hit and and congratulations by the way oh my god oh, thank you so much yeah but, we're we're pretty in fact i don't know if you can hear her she's she's in the background making noise yeah, she's she, but this is like an angel baby she's like so you know so i loved it when we were kind of going okay you and I are on this video push uh, as yeah. really those talk radio. We had Plan A, and so we repurposed Plan B last week. And you were like, you know, bouncing this pile of paint. In my <laughs> and boy, I'll tell you, nothing motivates me more because the, what motivates me at the core of everything I do is helping business owners to feed their families and Amen. to encourage them and lift them up so they can discover how they're going to do that, like all on their own. And so when you're like bouncing that baby, I'm like, okay. It's like God's way of saying, Michelle, get out of your own damn way. This is all not about you. You need to just, you know, keep on doing what you're doing. 
And don't drop the ball on the people that you're partnering with because there's this pink baby that's in this tall man's arms and you're so sweet with her. It was killing me. So you're, you're growing your business literally one baby step at a time, just like yeah. my dad and godfather did. So, you know, talk with us a little bit about that concept. And, you know, I mean, this yeah. is like a huge flipping deal, man. I mean, I've got me and doc, like, you know, we're grown people, but you've got these two little babies and this beautiful woman who's working, but you know, that's a lot. Well, no, absolutely. And you know, I go through, I go through waves. It's waves of, oh shit. Um, and waves <laughs> of, I got this, um, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, it's back and forth, but, uh, try not to lose focus and getting, getting so hung up on the, oh shits, um, and keeping more focus on, I, I got this and moving forward and figuring things out. Um, and just using this, uh, you know, it's kind of nice because, you know, with all what's going on right now, I'm, I'm getting more time to hold the baby. Um, even if I'm working out, you know, it's fine. I mean, babies are easy, uh, you know, easier for the guy at least, uh, right now, simply because they eat, sleep and go potty. I mean, that's you know, what they do. So, you know, I can hold her while I'm typing emails or doing stuff like that, or I can have her sitting off to the side in her bassinet, uh, that sort of thing. Um, we, you know, got the bottle warm, we got everything handy. Um, right. you know, but it's, it's, it's an up and down thing, but I, I much like when raising a kid, it's about patience. <laughs> and that's something that I lack. I am probably, and ask my wife, it, you know, I'm probably one of the most impatient people you'll ever meet in your life. I know there's been moments where that impatience has hurt my career. Uh, there's moments where that patience has paid off, um, but it's knowing when to apply that impatience and the patience. Um, mm -hmm. And with kids, it's it's patience. And overall, with with trying to build your own thing, it's you got to have that. I mean, you have to have that. Uh, that's one of the biggest things that I've, I've really have grown a lot in is being able to do that and be patient with certain things and certain aspects of my businesses. You know, what a great way, to, honestly, you know, so my brother was the kind of kid that needed the ball thrown to him. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. needed dad's full attention. But for me, if my dad had me sitting on his lap while he was balancing the books after working a full day, we were together. You know what I mean? When yeah. my dad came home at night exhausted after working a 15 hour day, he would sit in the rocking chair downstairs and watch whatever. And I would get on his lap and fall asleep. And I swear, I sat on my dad's lap until I was like 14. I swear to God. Yeah. Until I was so big that I was going to kill him. You know what I mean? Like I, I, we, we were very physically close that way. And to me, it, you know, my, my crib was in my dad's bicycle shop. I often joke and say more people have changed my diaper in the state of uh, Vermont in the town of Rutland than I care to admit. But, you know, a lot of people have seen me see my naked butt because I, my diaper was changed in public a lot. Right? So that's, yeah. what, that's what we do when we have a brick and mortar store. And, and, and now, you know, you're working from home and you're able to, you know, be in your jammies or your, your sweats and have your baby spit up on you. And it's not as much of a, a because there's, there's spit up involved. Hopefully it never happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of fluids involved. <laughs> well, that was right, exactly. A lot of a lot of a lot of all variations of of, of, uh, of uh, I don't know consistency, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So what, one of the things when I was at Edward Jones and I was a financial advisor, one of the things that they would say is that Edward Jones was really really happy when you did one of two things: you either had a baby or bought a car. Oh right. You bought a car. He, if you want to get motivated, buy a Cadillac, right? You know, oh, yeah. I have a Cadillac story I won't share during this episode, but, but, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the kid thing does really drive you because, you know, you don't, you've got to, when, when plan A or plan B doesn't, doesn't work, you better get started on plan, plan Z.2.9, right? I mean, yeah. you, there's just no, I, I, I posted yesterday, I had this really great conversation with my uncle Nick, who was in the fashion industry, and I, I'll introduce you guys together too. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, he, had a, he had a dress factory called Linda Lee Fashions in Rutland, Vermont. It was the number one uh, employer in Rutland, Vermont for many years, and he wow. still has a pension program that he's paying out to for hundreds of people that he um, that he employed, um, wow. and he's supporting, still supporting hundreds of people. That's amazing. On, um, women, uh, uh, mothers, um, mother of the bride dresses and bridesmaid dresses. Wow. No way. A hundred percent. Now my, my uncle was also a professional hunter and he, uh, had a video business that was around hunting and he had a bakery. Wow. So he was making these crazy dresses, employing 
a giant chunk of my hometown, had a bakery where he was making cookies, okay? He was going away on the weekends and doing videos of his shoots and people were professionally hiring him to take him on a hunt in Canada. No way. So when people say to me, Michelle, you need to focus, I'm like, oh no, no. Let me introduce you to the men that raised me. They were focused. They were focused on making money and being yeah. successful and they did whatever it took. And sometimes what it takes is having two gigs that you're building simultaneously because you know what? Those two little mouths over there in that picture are need to eat every day. And you're going to yeah. build both of those things simultaneously and you're going to do little bits of a time and you're not giving up. And those swim lessons aren't going to pay for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. No, but yeah, like it's, it's, it's so true. And what's interesting is that um, he was able to, whether or not the, the, the dress business was something that he had like an, an interest in, but like he found other areas they had interests in and built businesses around those. I think that's that's a good takeaway to take from this is being able to find those those things that you have interests and passions in, whether it's a hobby or something, and figuring out a way to monetize that or create some type of income, whether it's a lot or a little, is is you know here neither here or there. But uh, he found things that he was already doing and was interested in, and created income off of those. Because you've got to be passionate about about what you're doing in order to demonetize it. You can't just go, hey, I think I'm gonna do this little thing that I'm not passionate about. So Relentless right. Talk Radio is all about that. I, I realized right. a year ago, when people kept on saying, focus, 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 I'm like, I am focused, you know? I created Relentless Talk Radio to create one conversation that's focused on my four passions, art and fashion, yeah. health and fitness, entrepreneurism and philanthropy. I am doing one dang thing, I'm a polypreneur, and I'm yeah. building all four of my brands simultaneously. Yeah. And I have a lead brand and I have a lag brand. And that changes on a regular basis. Sometimes art is my lead brand. Right. Sometimes well, it's, it's, it's hard for it. people to understand sometimes. Yeah. You know, like they don't they don't know what, what the strategy is behind what certain people are doing. So to them it may not seem like focus. Yeah. Um, while you know that, you know, and I think that's one thing you gotta each person out there that may be watching would need to understand is you have to pick and choose when you need to hear and accept the feedback that you're getting from outsiders. Right. And that's, yeah. it's hard sometimes, but it's yeah. sometimes like feedback isn't helpful because as long as you are confident and you trust in your vision and the plan that you're putting in place, now your, your plan may be crap and you might need to take some, take some of that feedback to heart. Right. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, and make make those pivots, but I mean, it, it's it's a fine line sometimes. When now you obviously you have a very sound strategic vision and plan in place, and so when you hear people say you need to focus, you're like, okay, yeah, you just gotta be like, all right, uh, thanks, appreciate it, you know, moving on. Focus. Um, but you know what? We talked about pre-show that um, I wasn't gonna wait to create the content until I had it perfect, my lighting perfect. Yeah. We're gonna be talking about lighting on the video uh, episode that we're doing. But I wasn't going to wait until I had all my ducks in a row and I had it all figured out. Because if you wait, you are never going to do shit. You yeah, have got absolutely. to start saying, okay, I'm hearing your feedback. I got to get clear here. So this year what I'm doing is I'm documenting on the special editions what I'm doing with video and how you and I are working together because we're going to be building our brands together. And yeah. also now I'm repurposing. I'm digitally evolving. So on Thursdays, on, this, on the second and fourth Thursdays at 9 to 930 Brandy Lawson and I from Fire FX are going to be documenting my fine tuning of my four brands under my umbrella brand, which is Michelizzi Enterprises. And I'm using my example as a way for other people who have their own examples to yeah. maybe pick up and learn a couple nuggets that will keep them pushing along the way. That's so we were talking good. about fabric earlier. You are the winner of the designer and residence program um, for the, through the Arizona Apparel Foundation. I'm super duper flipping proud of you. It's a no brainer. I know several of the folks that are, winners of the of the award i'm i'm really proud of all of you it's super brave you all have Thank really you. inspirational stories and congratulations thanks one of the things we talked about earlier was fabric has, has put out a couple posts saying holy crap stop making your own face masks yeah. because you are not getting face masks is not like a, a it's not a fashion item that you can that th there's actually a way that face masks are built in order to actually work they're not just a piece of any old fabric Right. Um, 
And so they're working, Fabric is working with local officials through Banner Health, and they've been connecting with the leadership there, and that's all kind of in progress. But talk to us a little bit about this idea of, of this face mask thing. We, you, well, I asked you two things you want to talk about, and this is the first thing you want to talk about, so tell yeah. me. Um, listen, folks, like, like I, we all understand your heart's in the right place and you want to help. Like, that's without question. But stop making the masks, please. It's not, you understand. Okay, so Angela Johnson, who is one of the founders of Fabric and one of the co-directors of the Designer Residence Program, you know, she's an industry professional. She's a textile professional. She knows textiles um, like the back of her hand. What people don't understand is with a, a fiber like cotton, when you're, when you're knitting or woven these things together, you're still creating space between each thread. It's microscopic, but you're still creating spaces between each thread, okay? So when you have something that like a cotton, cotton material, you have these micro spaces between each thread. Well, as it turns out, and I, I can't, I don't have the data in front of me, but the, the size of a molecule of the coronavirus is still smaller than the space between the threads of a cotton fiber, right? 100%. So those, those molecules are still flying through that cotton face mask. So imagine you have it over your face, right? Those, those things are still going through no matter what. It's well, not, you're running low because the, we have allergies right now in, in Arizona. So all of our nose right. right. Oh, yeah. So no, allergies are going crazy. Unaffected fabric on your face. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a thing is like, that's what is, she's, you know, and I, it's crazy because I'm seeing more and more people posting about they're making, they're making these masks and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, I, and I get it, but it, that's not where it's a little misguided in my opinion, right? And there's probably people out there that's gonna object to that or whatever, but when that's cool, that's your that's your right to do so. But I'm here to tell you like, these are com this is coming from expert people in the field that are saying, we the reason why these masks are heavily guarded by the FDA and, and how you have to go through certifications to manufacturing these certain types of garments, all right? Because they have to weave and wo weave these threads together in a particular way so it catches all that and not to mention the materials they're using are a little bit more technical in nature as opposed to something as a cotton or yep. you know a, a knitted cotton or a woven cotton or that sort and of thing want to make sure because fabric is a manufacturing uh plant here in tempe arizona and it's a, it, it's it, it, it produces small lines of fab of uh fashion but one of the biggest things about fabric that we need to know is the sustainability component. So yeah. fabric is always making things that are sustainable. So the people can go to, um, is it fabric.com? Fabric yeah, go to Tempe Fabric or the, is, um, the nonprofit sector of that organization is the is Arizona Apparel Foundation. And then um, you guys will be posting updates to what they yeah. may or may not be doing as yeah. far as health. And they are definitely posting updates about what's going on. I, I, I'm going to be... I need to go touch base with them over there today because um, I want to find out if they've had any progress with uh, working with the local officials about basically what they want. They're trying to do is they're they're just choosing to reallocate all their manufacturing resources right. to help cut down the supply chain. That's the problem. Like this is the thing. This is nationwide, worldwide. Even there is going to be a, there's a lot of uh, healthcare companies or networks, whatever you want to call it that are facing shortages in certain things like the masks, even gown, you know, you know, the, 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 um, I have no idea what I'm like, what they're called, but the gowns and stuff like that fabric, they want to basically, <laughs> they want to, they want to basically shift all their manufacturing abilities to help reduce the supply chain and get these items made here so they can deliver them faster to the people that are in need of these items okay and so that's what they're working through they're going they're working through with the proper officials and experts with with like the cdc and stuff to ensure that okay what do we need to do work you know give us your your suggestions on sourcing the materials so we can get the stuff made and get the stuff out and going um because every second counts because at some point people are really going to run out especially these small like nursing home facilities and this sort of thing like 
that doesn't have like the infrastructure infrastructure like a banner health does right um they're gonna need help they're gonna need these supplies because they're gonna run out otherwise they have no choice but to resort to a bandana over the face or a homemade mm -hmm. mask and that sort of thing kind of sort a little bit yeah so that, that kind of is a really good way, place for us to come into our last topic. And we've been yeah. going on for about 30, looks like 39 minutes. We get a little over, no big deal. Twice, no big deal. We could talk forever, you and I. I love oh, that. Oh my idea. gosh, I can, I can blabble forever. Yeah, forever. We, we, we have tons of things we, we relate to and, and, uh, and can sh share about. But one of the last things we wanted to talk about was silver linings. And that is an example of a silver lining. Yeah. Fabric right now is a is a bootstrapped company, and they, they get some grants and things from the government. But they've been literally. Can we talk here for a second about this? Angela Johnson and Sherry Berry have personally bootstrapped and and literally carried that organization on their own flipping bank accounts. Now I've done that myself with every single one of my businesses, and I know how hard that is and how much true grit you have to have. They both have families, okay? Yeah. They both have their own expenses and they yep. have been, and it a ten thousand square foot facility that they have Jerry rigged with a combination of their bank accounts, some help from the city of Tempe. It's a huge two of the most hardest working, genuine, integritous people, never mind women that I know, people on the planet, okay, are, are Angela and Sherry. So so kudos to them. And you Absolutely. know fabric needs help. So this might be a way that we can all help Fabric by tuning in and finding out how we can support this particular effort. And this effort might lead to other things moving forward. So that the topic we were talking about was silver linings. Whenever there's a crap shit show that happens, there's always stuff that happens that that is like, wow, you know what? If that, that thing hadn't blown up, this yeah. great opportunity that launched my business wouldn't have happened. Like, you know, if my dad hadn't passed away in February, the conversation I had with my uncle Nick, I would have never had, and he would have died with that story in him. And I wouldn't have ever heard right. how he was a little boy, the people in the neighborhood would pick on him because my grandfather was also a dressmaker and he was building a dress company and they were poor initially. My, my, my grandfather was an offshore marineman from Italy who swam to shore here in, 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 uh, in New York and created the, uh, his first dress, dress company on Central Avenue in, in Brooklyn. And wow. they were poor initially. And they used to pick on my, on my uncle for being poor and having, and, and, and I have to ask him the actual words it was, but they used to pick on him. And so he said when he was real little, I am not going to be poor. I am going to make it. And my mm -hmm. grandfather made it. And then he went on to make it, obviously. So he, I would never have had that conversation had it not been for a variety of things happening, including my dad's passing. So it's really a gem. So yeah. for you, um, what are some of the things that you're doing to take this coronavirus thing and kind of a, a, a slowdown in work yeah. while you have a baby and you're building yeah. your brands? What are you doing to create silver linings? Well, yeah, I mean, I have a lot more time on my hands, let's just say right now, because um, what a lot of people don't know is because of the situation, companies have virtually either canceled their ad budgets or put all their stuff on hold, which has left a lot, left a lot of people like myself. And it's not just me, yeah. it's industry-wide for all the filmmakers out there, all the editors out there, all the directors and producers yeah. out there, we're basically not working. Um, yeah. And this morning I posted that um, Netflix is, oh, is yeah, giving hundred million dollars to help you guys out. So you know, if you are in the film industry, a video producer, anything to do with movie, TV, advertising, production in that area, I don't know what the story is behind Netflix. But go to Netflix and and, and find out what the yeah. deal is. With money. Well, and that's and that's what's happened is especially with on that side of things with all the TV show productions that were in mid production and have had to basically shut down their production shoots you know some of these production crews are into the hundreds um and there's a lot of people you know and these are guys that these are uh, trade laborers laborers right so you got you know to build these sets they're they're con basically construction workers those are construction workers that are building sets and electricians and you know that's not even getting into the top of the line creative people on these productions like those are these are oh, laborers people that are yeah in the food yeah, food. yeah oh, craft services yeah. people in there. so um which is really cool to hear um well this is what i've done okay because you know the it, it all came pretty sudden too right for a lot of us it, it, the the rug was pulled out beneath our feet um and which i get but uh what i've done is i've 
started to use this opera as an opportunity to to look at heights and figure out okay what what sort of things do i need to optimize more uh within my marketing plan and my strategy overall and so luckily with a lot of these companies out here offering free subscriptions to their their services and stuff you know so i got onto one of them and just started going through some of their playbooks you know figuring out retooling my my sales strategy and my marketing strategy and go, learning some new stuff you know facebook ad facebook ads has changed quite a bit over the last couple of years and i kind of like left that yeah. let that pass me up mm -hmm. so i was like okay i'm gonna use this an opportunity to read back up on that kind of re reinform myself on what's going on what's changed with facebook ads and that sort of thing um on on my other creative side uh, with the video stuff i've been wanting for so long for at least a couple of years now wanting to learn how to do 2d character animations um in after effects and so working towards getting the basics of 2d character animations um in after effects because um 2d ex uh, animation explainer videos have are pretty much pretty well in demand right now um and they're expensive to make and so right now if i take on a client that, that not that would like to have one done um you know i have industry friends that that I call upon to take care of that for me, but it's been something I've been wanting to to, to learn you know, how to do. You do your tool toolbox, right? You, yeah, you know, tool toolboxes, right? Yeah. So that's one thing that I've been, and then I get to hold my baby more, um, and that's kind of fun. Really, in a way, this is great because you get to spend these. The, your kid is going to be so much more well adjusted because I mean, she's going to yeah. spend so much time in both of your arms. And I, I get mean, to wrestle around with the five year old more too. So fun. You know, my, my father and my uncle both would say to you, the thing that they wish they'd done more of is spend time with their young children. Yeah, and that's what I hear a lot. I, um, I am really lucky because the way I'm wired is that I always felt like I was I was with my father 24-7. Yeah. I literally was with my parents 24-7, but the, my dad was focused on other things. So it's even when we were planning a ride this past weekend, like I don't need to micromanage how Doc and fr his friends oh, right. Why? Right. I can just go back and just people think I'm being subservient. I don't have to manage everything. You know what I mean? Oh, like, right. yeah. you can be the laid back too. I can be chill. I can be chill. You know what I mean? <laughs> my, my dad and my grandfather, my godfather taught me that. I can just sit in the parking lot and read a book. You know what I mean? Yeah. My mom will joke and say, you know, Michelle, when you were a baby, we'd give you like a crayon, a half a string, and like a piece of court cardboard, and you'd entertain yourself for five hours. It was fascinating. I think that that's the skill that people need to acquire during this time period because it, it, when people say to me, oh, I'm bored, I'm losing my mind, I'm like, oh, no, no. We are living in the time of the internet, people. Yeah. There are so many things and tools out there that are just crazy, just crazy, crazy, crazy uh, right there for you. They're free. You just got to go and play with them. You can't yeah. break your computer. You know yeah, I mean? You just absolutely. Go and play with stuff. You know, so I love that you're learning a new skill. Awesome. And you never know. That new skill might be a service in your toolbox that you make yeah. a substantial amount of money on that puts your kid through school. I mean, that's what happened with my dad. People would come into the bicycle shop in Vermont and say, Frank, while I'm you know, here, I, can you please tell me where I can go for a ride? And my father would pull out a map. He got a bunch of Vermont maps. He pulled them out and he would highlight a good ride for them to go on. And he oh, would, cool. he's like, my father was always like, huh. So he would when he's once he started to do that enough, he's like, I'm going to start keeping the copy of the highlighted maps, right? Yeah. So when he sold the bicycle business, he had a pile of highlighted maps. Wow, well played. Vermont State map. So for many yeah. years, if you wanted to use the Vermont State map for anything, he had to license it for my father. I mean, come on. All right. <laughs> this is a guy. He was the guy that went at, to be a machinist in the Air Force, and now you got to call him to get like, the rights to the map. So he took all of those those tours and he put them on one map and he created a bicycling map that wow. he then created a distributing company to distribute around the state of Vermont and that he became the number one travel and tourism distribution person. He was a person, okay? He didn't have a whole team of people. One guy became the number one travel and tourism distribution person, okay? Company wow. in the state wow. of Vermont. You know how it happened? It happened because he just started to highlight stuff and was yeah. forward enough to stockpile that. And guess what paid for my college education? That's amazing. Mountain maps and guides. 
and yeah. root mode distributing paid for my education. Wow. Okay, now come on. All right. That's amazing. I mean, that's such a that's, that's, that's like entrepreneurs think. Yeah. They are opportunists. Okay. Yeah. So you know, Scotty, this this thing that you're doing right now might be what puts your kid through school. Right. Absolutely. Well, and that's what's what what keeps me going. And what's what keeps the wheels spinning in my head all the time. Like, okay, what can I because it's just like that. It's you never know what little thing can lead to another bigger thing, to another bigger thing that just kind of snowballs into this situation. Now, what 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 is important to people to understand though, it's not a light switch. You don't just flip the switch and it happens and then you're making money off of it. It's not, right? And to your to your story's point is yeah. that one, you have to have to be able to take action on these sorts of things. And I yeah. think that's where, I mean, even myself included, like this is where a lot of stuff falls off the, you know, the wagons, uh, the wheels fall off the wagon is that we don't take enough action um, to, to put it into place because it might be hard or difficult, time consuming. We have too many competing priorities and that sort of thing. Um, and, that's and we have to all figure it out and the lighting has got to be perfect. And, you know, it, we were talking about this with my YouTube channel. I, one of my goals this year is to get 20,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So if you're listening, go to youtube.relentless.com and flip and subscribe. Okay. So, you know, I didn't, you're not going to get 20,000 followers like right away. And right. I wasn't only, do, I have, I have a friend that does um, 40 times around. Okay. It's called, now it's called FT adventures. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he, only focuses on travel, um, uh, uh, motorcycle travel, right, and and adventure, right. And he dumped his everything into that. That was his sole thing, okay. But he was also working a day job, and he was also taking side jobs, okay. But he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about his thing, right. And so he's he's got thirty nine thousand followers right now, subscribers, wow. right. Unreal. So I, I was watching him and thinking, you know what? I like that idea. I like the idea of getting a, a residual income from getting um, advertising dollars on YouTube. Um, I'm, I can't dump all of my eggs into that basket right now. Yeah. But what I can do is I'm doing this thing with my Relentless Art Projects. I'm going to take all those interviews. I'm going to put them on YouTube. So this way people can share them. They're off of Facebook. They're, they're just on YouTube, right? And then I thought, well... I'm going to start making thumbnails for um, Relentless Talk Radio because it's important. So you'll start to see my first video was real crap. And then uh, then there's like about 60 videos. And then you'll start to see a, a, a consistent thumbnail start to happen, right? Yeah. yeah. So I have about 150 videos on my YouTube channel right now. And I have like 89 subscribers. Okay. Does that make me? And people say, oh, Michelle, it's, it's failing. You should stop doing that. No, I won't. I'm dumping mad content in there because you know what? When I get ready to put more of my eggs in that basket, I'll have 200 videos that right. people will see value for seven years or however long it's been in there. And they won't be like, there won't be four videos there that are perfectly produced with the lighting perfect. And I figured it all out where I have notes and I never have a menopausal moment. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. So you have to get into action. And when people say, oh, Michelle, you're wasting a lot of time on this or that, focus on this. I'm like, hey, you know what? I know what my vision is. You have your vision. I'll have mine. And you know what? I might be completely wrong about YouTube. Okay. Right. So I might have 102 followers when I give up on YouTube. I, I you know, okay. But you know what? I've learned so much. And some of those videos have gotten 35,000 views. And I'm going to end with this. Here's my philosophy on everything that I do. And then people talk about followers and, you know, uh, money and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Here's the deal. If I affect one person, kind of like the starfish story, you right. know, the old boy and the young boy on the beach, and he's, you know, he's leaning down. And he's, it's, there's all these starfish that, that have, have come up to the beach, and he's leaning down and he's throwing one starfish into the water. And then he's walking for a little bit and he leans down and he picks him another way, he throws him in. And the old man comes up and says, young man, you're, you're crazy. You can't save them all. And the little boy looks at the old man and he says, you know what? But I just saved that one. Right. Exactly. So there might be somebody, like I built my, my, my salon back in Vermont. I spent a crap ton of money. I built it to raise a family and have a happy marriage. At the end, I had no family, no happy marriage. I'm out here in Arizona. <laughs> what? I sold that business. And that business right now has fed somebody else's family. And the stylists that are working there, it's fed their family. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a huge win because something I built is feeding somebody else's family. Okay. And so we can't just, we don't know 
sometimes we monetize stuff when the only success is that money exchanged hands and it went into my bank account. There's all kinds of currency. <coughs> you are able to affect one person. <coughs> you need some water. <coughs> <laughs> If you're able to affect one, one person, then you've done your job, right? Oh, show us, show us your mug and we'll end with that. Your mug is. Oh, fun. yeah. It's voted most likely to need a coffee. hundred <coughs> percent. I don't know what happened. Yeah. You got like a little tickle in your throat. You're, you're choking me up. You're choking me up. With <laughs> story. It's not coronavirus. It's just a tickle. <laughs> I promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Well, Scott, we've gone on for almost an hour, and I love that. I love that we had the luxury of doing that today because we recorded this episode. Is there anything else that you want to close with? People can go to editorscott.com to reach you for video, but how about um, uh, what's the the, the um, URL for the – and I'll put it on the oh, bottom. Oh, yeah, uh, shopheightsapparel.com. Okay. Check it out. I'm going to be – we'll be releasing some more content, um, you know, just really ramping things up and, and using this as an opportunity to retool and um, – you know, I want to want to. This program, Fabric, is a solely community-funded organization through the Arizona Apparel Foundation. That's the same funding that funds this designer residence program. And you know, I just encourage people out there because they've helped over 450 small businesses in Arizona alone on top of all the community based programs and initiatives that they all are already doing. So I just encourage folks, if you want to help out locally, please find an opportunity to go to the Arizona apparel foundation and, and place a donation because there's a lot of people that have benefit from this local community, this community based organization. And we want to ensure that they keep moving the ball forward for the things that they're doing uh, for Tempe, Phoenix, Mesa, you know, Arizona in general. So if you get a chance, you know, go visit their Arizona Apparel Foundation and and, and place a donation with them. It, it, it's 100 percent tax deductible, all that fun stuff. Um, but, yeah, you see this as an opportunity to, to help out with the local organization. You know, I just, I just love uh, what you're talking about there. You're saying, hey, when you fund this organization, you're funding me, which is actually funding um, this little thing that I've created over here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the video back. Oops, let's see, cancel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that, that picture back up there. Uh, let's see. And we're going to end with that picture. Oh, I can't, I don't, where, where did I put it? It's lost in the mix. It's lost, it's lost in the mix. Let's see. There it is. Um, when you actually go to that organization and give them money, what you're doing is you're helping to feed these people, these two little people, okay? And that's how it works. Um, I don't know if you guys have, have tapped into the Arizona Gives campaign through the um, the, found, the, found, the Association or the Foundation for Arizona Nonprofits. Um, check that out too at Arizona Give. They, they've um, I, I posted Kristen Merrifield, the the, the CEO of that uh, organization's um, video. So take a look at that Arizona Gives and see if Fabric can tap into some okay. of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I just I'm so impressed with you, Scott. I'm super excited that that we've been able to connect and that we're going to be doing some cool stuff together. Yeah. I'm excited for Relentless Talk Radio and the and the business owners that have been involved with Relentless Talk Radio so far, which have been 178 wow. in the past year. That's amazing. Um, I've had 178 conversations, which has been an honor and a privilege with small business owners in here in Arizona and Vermont. And and uh, and you and I are going to be working towards educating them and other business owners about video and the power of video and on social media. And I'm super excited about that. Yeah. I mean, on the um, the second and fourth Wednesdays at 7 a.m. So we'll end with that right at 58 minutes. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thank you. Just Michelle, that, thank I you. can't wait till I get the holder. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, we'll connect so you can. You get the chance. And I might. I don't know. I might lick her when I see her, but you know. <laughs> I don't. I, the, the, the so cheeks, sweet. I just want chubby cheeks. You can't help it with the chubby just, cheeks. Oh, I just want to just grab a hold on and just suck on her. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, Scotty, thanks a lot. Thank your wife for letting me uh, borrow you for an hour, and uh, and and thank the babe for being like so good. She's just kind of hanging out over there. She's, yeah. she's awesome as a person. So thank you so much. I'm hoping I spelled uh, shopheightsapparel.com correct in the scroller below. I think I might have I might have typoed, but you know, you guys get the point. Yeah. You, can, you can Google it. Yeah, Google it. You'll find it. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Scotty, have a good rest of your All day. Right, take care, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.